Thank you. Welcome, Council. Welcome, staff, members of the audience, our residents that are here, and the residents watching at his home. Welcome to the Council meeting, Monday, February 13th, 2023. I'd like to ask that everybody stand for the singing of our national anthem, O Canada, please. Thank you, Council. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection, please. Thank you, Council. Audience, please be seated. At the town of New Tecumseh, we acknowledge that we are on the treaty lands and traditional territory of the Anishinaabe peoples, specifically the Ojibwa, the Ottawa, Potawatomi peoples, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy, this land is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. New Tecumseh is covered by Lake Simcoe, Nottawasaga Treaty Number 18, signed on October 17, 1818, with the Chippewa Nation. We acknowledge that we are all treaty people and accept the responsibility to honour all our relations and move forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect. Thank you. I'm going to go to the clerk now for confirmation of the agenda. Thank you, Your Worship. There are no items to add or delete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So I'll have a recommendation. Be it resolved that the agenda for the council meeting held on February 13th, 2023 be confirmed to circulated. Councillor Foster, Councillor Masters, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Disclosure of pecuniary interest. Do any members of council have a pecuniary interest? Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I need to declare on CW31, the temporary patio program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other council members? Well, if one comes up or you find yourself in a position as we go through the meeting, please immediately raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you. I have one on CS1. At that point, I'll leave the meeting and I'll hand it over the chair to the deputy mayor, please. Adoption of council minutes. Be resolved that the minutes of the council meeting dated January 30th, 2023 be adopted as circulated. A mover and a seconder, uh, Councillor Jacks. Councillor Biss, all those in favor, that's carried, thank you. Determination of items requiring separate discussion. I'll look to the clerk, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Item D1, Martin Kuzma, CEO, Nottawasaga Futures, re and introduction on Nottawasaga Futures to Council as there is a presentation. Item D2, Mary Elizabeth Moore, re Alliston Memorial Arena as there is a deputation. Item D3, Marie Michelle Sorensen, Three Sisters Village, reprogram expansion as there is a presentation. Item CW31, Temporary Restaurant Patios Program as there's a disclosure of pecuniary interest. And item CS1, Verbal Report of the Clerk, re unsolicited request to purchase part of unopened road allowance adjacent to One Maple Avenue East Beaton as uh, there is a disclosure of pecuniary interest and staff are seeking direction. Thank you. Um, I believe C3, we have a request from Shift in regards for the waiving of fees and direction should will be required. So I could look to maybe a member of council if they'd like to pull that item. 
So, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Gabrick. Okay, thank you. So, and council members, does anybody have any other items they'd like to pull for discussion, please? I'm not seeing any. So I go back to the clerk, please. Could you please identify all the items that are pulled for discussion? D dash. Thank you, Your Worship. D dash one. Martin Kuzma, CEO, Nottawa Saga Futures Deputation. Uh, D dash two. Mary Elizabeth Moore, um, Allison Memorial Arena Deputation. D dash three. Marie Michelle Sorensen, Three Sisters Village Reprogram Expansion Presentation. C dash three. Um, the request for coldest night of the year. Request for fee. Fees waived from Jennifer Purgentile, Executive Director of Shift, and CW31, Temporary Restaurant Patios Program, and CS1, uh, Verbal Report of the Clerk, uh, unsolicited request to purchase part of unopened road allowance adjacent to 1 Maple Avenue East. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have a motion to be resolved that items on the Committee of the Whole Meeting Report dated January 30th, 2023, including additional information memorandums, with the exception of those items those items identified for separate discussion be approved and the recommendations therein be adopted and further the communication items and any other item listed on the council meeting agenda dated February 13th 2023 with the exception of those items identified for separate discussion be received and are adopted move in a second or moved by the deputy mayor second Mary Councilor Harrison McIntyre all those in favor please that's carried thank you we have no deputations requiring statutory or public meetings Thank you. So we'll move on to our deputations then. And our first deputation is from Martin Kuzma, CEO of Nottawasaga Futures. And we're having an introduction on Nottawasaga Futures to Council. So Martin, if you'd like to come up, our deputations are seven minutes. And just so you know, the clerk does hit that clock. Perfect. That's good <laughs> enough for me. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Martin. Uh, my name is Martin Kuzma. I'm with uh, Nottawasaga Futures, the CEO. So essentially, Nottawasaga Futures is a community economic development corporation. Um, we provide business loans through our community investment fund, um, support to entrepreneurs, um, go on to the next slide if you don't mind. Support to entrepreneurs, um, information, resources, business coaching, and mentoring. Um, the, our catchment area is made up of the following five municipalities, including UTEC. Our head office is located here in Alliston with satellite offices in Innisfil, as well as town of Bradford. Uh, next slide, please. Um, these are just a summation of some of our services here for the fiscal year 2021 to 2022. Um, in terms of new tech, um, 20 new tech businesses participated in the coaching and mentoring program. Um, 67 new tech businesses received one-on-one -on -one business um, in-depth counseling. Um, in terms of the loans, um, in 2021-22, seven loans were issued to new tech businesses for just over $300,000. Uh, new, uh, next slide, sorry. Uh, next slide again. Um, we, our organization did participate in the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund, and there's through FedDev. Um, so in our community, we lent out just over $2.199 million for a total of 49 businesses that were supported through that through those funds. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, we, through our community economic development um, programs, we participated in 19 community projects. Um, next slide, please. Um, some of those projects included uh, youth entrepreneurship. Um, we partnered with Focus on delivering um, youth um, program where it introduces youth to potential of entrepreneurship as a career option. We also act as a film liaison for the area. Um, we provide the BizLink program with, um, with help, which helps support business transition of um, owners looking to sell their businesses. Um, we've par partnered with Camp Hill, Maple, Camp Hill Communities of Ontario in their Maple Syrup Festival. So again, introducing to um, entrepreneurship through different groups. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we also participate in a green program called the South Simcoe Streams Network, where the uh, objective is to um, rehabilitate the streams throughout our region. And um, we also participate with the agricultural sector in the area through our Acknowledge Forum and providing support to agricultural businesses. Um, next slide, please. And that's uh, pretty much it. Next slide, please. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Y your reputation is phenomenal throughout the community. Oh, thank and you. Certainly a lot of new businesses and, and small businesses certainly reached out to you and they have nothing but yeah. uh, okay. uh, great things to say. But Martin, if you don't mind, I'm just going to kind of go around the council table to see Perfect. if there's any questions for clarification. So I'll just, Councillor Foster. Uh, thank you, Mayor Norcross, for you too, uh, Martin. Thank you for your presentation. Can you, can you describe in what capacity 
our, our economic development office and Nottawasaga Nottawa Futures, how they interact and how they complement each other, work with each other? Um, for sure. Um, we work together very closely in terms of the supporting the business community. Um, we help businesses that are setting up in the community navigate the um, local bylaw process in terms of um, if they're setting up a restaurant where they have to go to get the proper bylaws that comply with that. Um, what else? Um, any open any lands that are available for sale. Um, sort of the inventory we, we look to the town to sort of help us with navigating that if we have big investors coming into the area that may reach out to us um, and in terms of film we um, work with the town to make sure that um, when we issue the film permits that all the um, sort of check boxes have been ticked off in terms of a public safety perspective and yeah that was for us no thank you it was just nice to hear all some of the more collaborative stuff you do with the town and are you mutually beneficial? So I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go around the council table and coming back around this way. Thank you, Martin. Um, yeah. Another questions from council. So we have a motion be resolved that the deputation of Martin Kuzma, CEO of Nottawasaga Futures, be received. Councillor Cox, Councillor Rappin, all those in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, Martin, very Thank much. You, everyone. We're moving on to our second deputation. Mary Elizabeth Moore, reference the Allison Memorial Arena. Ms. Moore, would you like to come up to the, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Mayor Norcross, Deputy Mayor McClellan, councillors, staff, and fellow citizens. My name is Mary Elizabeth Moore. I am a long time resident, having lived here since 1972. First in Beaton, and now in rural new Tecumseh. My talk tonight is about the Alliston Memorial Arena. I come in support of the upgrades to this arena proposed in the current budget. I watched both of the current budget working ses sessions and was pleased to see attention given to the Alliston Memorial Arena. Having attended the youth dances there, the rodeo, and roller derby games, I've seen firsthand its value to the community. However, it was mentioned at the last budget meeting that the arena was on its last legs, run down, and beyond its use. I was surprised, as when at the vaccination clinic held there during the pandemic, everything looked really good. After that budget meeting was over, I decided to make a trip into Alliston to take a look inside the Memorial Arena. Upon entering, I was struck by the really fresh, bright, and superbly clean appearance everywhere inside. I went upstairs and saw the refurbished kitchen in the hall, a great space, which is now certified for community use. Coming back downstairs, I saw the arena floor being buffed for the evening's roller derby practices, and that large concrete floor was just gleaming, ready to welcome the roller derby ladies that evening and the ball hockey players coming both days on the weekend. Was being well used. As I walked near the renovated snack bar, I was reading the various scheduled events on the electronic information screen on the wall when a young father with his very young son came in. When chatting with the father, I asked if they were going to the sport meeting upstairs. I commented that his son appeared quite young for sports and he said, well, he is three. Then off they went upstairs. I could hear a ball bouncing and others arriving. Well, that said it all to me. Not only this father and son were having fun, but they were inside a safe and welcoming space, connecting with other young residents. I left feeling happy and proud, knowing that our town leaders supported residents by maintaining this building for the community. To me, the recent pandemic reinforced the fact that this arena provides a key service for the community. The large areas already there provide lots of adequate spacing between individuals and for community groups of various sizes. I feel it's especially important for youth to have safe spaces to gather for events together, as backyards are now much smaller than years ago, and playing games on streets definitely isn't nearly as safe as it was in the past. It was felt a while ago by some 
that with the opening of the new Tecumseh Recreation Center, this memorial arena was not then needed anymore. To me, both community centers are needed now more than ever as they serve different purposes for the ever-growing number of residents, many with young families. We are so fortunate that the Alston Memorial Arena is a really strong structure that was built to last. Like Stratford's William Allman Memorial Arena, which opened its doors there in 1924. When visiting Stratford, I saw the date that arena opened on a sign outside, so I decided to go in. I sensed its past history as soon as I stepped inside, and I saw firsthand how that arena is still going strong in that community. If someone has gro not grown up in New Tecumseh and moves here as an adult, I feel that anyone who steps inside our memorial arena will sense this town's history as well and want to make connections with other residents in the town. With lifestyles being different than years ago and many residents commuting significant distances to work, feeling connected, connected to where one lives can prove difficult. To me, anything that can help residents to connect and feel part of their home community is very important. I can envision the many, op the many activities being held now and in the future at Alliston's Memorial Arena will be a huge help to continue to foster the sense of community that I and so many others in New Tecumseh now enjoy. I therefore respectfully ask that you please support the proposed upgrades to the Alliston Memorial Arena as presented in this year's budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to thank you very much for taking the time to come out tonight and express those heartfelt feelings for the AMA. I know how supportive you've always been towards that facility, and you're right, it is getting used. So, um, is there any comments or questions from members of council or our presenter, Councillor Gabrick? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you for that lovely speech. Um, it was really well written and really funny, and it was nice to see the insight as to how the arena is being used. I don't think that the um, comment that it's on its last legs uh, represents everyone's views here at this table. And the things that were approved in the budget were the safety items. The floor being an add-on was kind of an additional ask, but we did support taking care of that building. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gabrick. Are there any other comments or questions? Thank you so much for taking the time out. And Council is having a all-day budget working session this Thursday, where there'll be further budget deliberations, and I'm sure your your presentation tonight will, will spill over into that meeting. Thank you, Mary Norcrest. Thank you. So we have a motion, be it resolved, that the deputation of Mary Elizabeth Moore be received. Councillor Cox, Councillor Gabrick, all those in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to our third deputation, please. Uh, Marie Michelle Sorensen, Three Sisters Village Re Reference Program Expansion. Hi, uh, if you'd like to come up to the microphone, please. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Richard Norcross, Your Worship. I've never done this before, so I don't You're know. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Members of council and everyone in the room. Mary, that was beautiful. That was very moving. Thank you for that. Um, so we're here today to um, just present to the members of council and everyone here who the Three Sisters Village, who we are, um, and kind of ask for a bit of a partnership or some support that we could get from council in order to kind of root ourselves in uh, the township of New Tecumseh. So a little bit about who we are. Uh, the Three Sisters Village is a place to be and grow. Uh, we are located at Homestead, which is uh, where I reside. Um, and there we offer a holistic approach to learning and development in an outdoor setting. Thanks. Our team is made up of five incredible women that have unique sets of gifts experience and knowledge that fuels this ever-evolving project. So you can see um, who those people are. I'm not going to read off um, every single one, but I wanted you guys to see their faces because they are such a big part of who we are. And Julia is here with us today, uh, supporting us as well. So we put our minds together to plan programs, develop business strategies, and form and educate our community on what Forest and Nature School is and what our programs are, and as well as connect to its members. Uh, we offer seasonal programs for school-aged children, if you guys are wondering what it is that we do. So we have fall, winter, and spring sessions, which last uh, 
a couple of weeks so our fall session lasts 12 weeks our winter session is almost done now we have we're on week seven uh, and then spring session starts after March break next slide please and we are an ever-evolving project uh, this is the way the way that the three sisters village is now is not even close to how we envisioned it would be in the beginning um, everything we do is kind of based on feedback that we get from the people that we work with that the guides the families and feedback from um, kind of our following now that we have social media and based on the needs of our community and because of that next slide please we actually developed a toddler Fridays program there was a big need for younger children there was a lot of people reaching out on social media about the younger children and so we kind of like I said before put our minds together and and made up this program so on Fridays we welcome uh, children aged two to three years old and we follow the same kind of schedule fall winter and spring sessions next slide please that's just a couple extra pictures I just feel like it's it's impactful just to kind of see the kind of to me it's like a picture sometimes holds like a certain energy so that's why I put those in there um, the saying it takes a village um, it couldn't be more true I find um, moving forward in this world we desire to continue to provide services and solutions that are accessible to all and this project allows us to learn and grow as individuals but also as a whole we're currently running all of our programs at the homestead like I said uh, before at 6600 County Road in Baxter which is in Essa Township um, but we can no longer sustain a large number of participants at this location that's just kind of a picture of our winter program and you can see there's a bit of an overflow um, we do have 25% of our home that we're able to use according to the bylaws for this and we've been granted special permission actually from the Essa Township to continue to run our programs um, as long as our neighbors we're not you know there's no complaints of dust or noise um, we had a lot of support from our neighbors because they just they see the life now at the homestead and um, so yeah, we did present to Essa Township, and like we said, we have a special permission to continue to run as is without any um, amendments or zoning amendments. So as our com community continues to grow, we're seeking a secondary site to build connections to. So the Three Sisters Village is looking for support from the town and members of council to achieve our goals for growth and accessibility. What we would like to offer the community um, we run summer camps we did this last year at the homestead so this is a full week program running Monday to Friday from 830 to 330 so it's a full day um, we're offering four weeks of camp this year uh, last year we did three weeks of camp um, we have connected with Earl Rowe Provincial Park um, we've been in contact with Jillian McDougall who is the um, superintendent and um, there is possibility for us to run our camps there um, so this is kind of something that we've already aligned ourselves but if there's other opportunities within the town that would be amazing to kind of um, look into any opportunity that we would have here in the town of New Tecumseh other than at Earl Rowe um, and really we're planning for the future so for our fall sessions of 2023 winter sessions of 2024 and spring session of 2024 because our numbers are growing and we can't sustain those numbers at the homestead we would really like that secondary site so that we can accommodate all of these participants and all of the families that want to come um, we've had to kind of put a few of the children for the toddler program on like a wait list because we don't have enough space um, to to really to have the program that we want to have and the children have the space that they need at the homestead um, so next slide please what we are looking for and this doesn't have to be like I said this is an ever-evolving project and we love the idea of um, hearing what you know members of council or anyone has to say about this or kind of um, suggest I guess so for our summer camps we're looking for a site with access to a forested area a sheltered space and access to washrooms um, so setting up under a pavilion or a sheltered space um, we've looked into renting a storage bin just to kind of put all of our camp materials in one safe spot just so we're not putting everything in the back of our cars back and forth every day um, and or if there's a storage space there I mean that's that's wonderful that we could use instead of renting a storage bin um, and for our seasonal programs most particularly 
We're looking for a site with access to a forested area. We need a shelter with access to water and washrooms and an indoor space. Because as the weather kind of cools off, we are an outdoor program. We spend most of our days outdoors, but like you guys saw, there's inclement weather days and um, and we need that indoor space for our, for our participants. Um, so the for the programs, it would be nice to have that one location where we have access to both, something where we can um, seek shelter inside. Um, yeah, and that so those are pictures there of like the homestead. And you can see like the one summer camp at the top. Like it's it's busy, <laughs> you know. And the kids they do they have free range. They even some of them call themselves free range children, with the free range chickens running around. So it's nice, but to have more space would be would be amazing. <coughs> so the three sisters. I'm gonna end with this. So the three sisters in our name could be a specific person, place, or thing, but most importantly, it's a symbol of reciprocity that reminds us that our unique gifts when shared with one another can lift and power and sustain an entire village. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just gonna go to council, see if there's any questions of the presenter, Councillor Masters. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, through you to uh, Mrs. Sorensen. Uh, first, I'd like to commend you on this initiative I think it's great to have such a camp in our area. Um, for my own edification, um, I know this is, these are camps, but is there a theme that you that you um, push or or um, what what is the main theme you like to uh, participate with the with the children? What is it you like to the messaging that you go through? The, the messaging. Camp? Um, that's a good question. It's a question that we kind of ask ourselves all the time, even in moving forward. Um, the biggest thing I think that the Three Sisters Village is founded on is the principles of Forest and Nature School. So Forest and Nature School, a lot of people are like, oh, it has to happen in a forest. Not necessarily. Um, it's based on principles that connect the participants to um, place and connects participants to themselves and allows children to kind of lead their own learning. Um, so when you talk about the emergent curriculum, um, it's that it, a curriculum per se, we don't follow a curriculum, we follow the children. So if there's something that interests them, um, us as guides, we're not, we don't see each other as teachers, we're not the givers of knowledge, we're the ones that kind of support and learn alongside the children. And so I think that's our biggest message is that we have so much to learn from one another mm -hmm. and it's not so much like you know, we're the teachers and they're the learners. It's we all learn together and we can't forget that third big party is nature and that connection to nature. We have so much to learn from nature. Yeah. Um, and so that is the like I would say nature is our biggest teacher. Yeah. Very nice. Supplementary, your worship. Go ahead. Um, knowing the area around here, um, is there a particular location that you've kind of thought would be very nice or something you think that would suit your purpose? Yeah, we've been really seeking Earl Row. So this has been happening since October. Um, there have been some challenges along the way. I think it's administrative um, issue, not issues, but just some challenges that were, I can't go beyond what I've gone. I think that the superintendent now has to take those steps to make sure that everything's aligned because we are an insured forest school. So there was Earl Row. We spend a lot of time at um, the Rotary Park in town. Um, we've gone to the Boyne Museum. I know that there's a bit of a space back there um, that doesn't thinking. always get used. Mary talked about the arena, and I, uh, instantly I just kind of, you know, I lit up. Um, I feel like something in the middle of the town, even though, like I said, we don't have access necessarily to a forest in the backyard, that's okay because um, connecting to place is really important and having our participants really understanding where they're from and connecting to the place that, that helps us thrive, right? That's, uh, that's um, why I thought maybe the um, Riverdale Park would be a... Yeah, the Rotary Park. Yeah, Rotary Park is mm -hmm. a good location. Yeah, they maybe. have that little forested area. We spend a lot of time there. It's beautiful. It's central. It's, yeah. Sorry, and just to clarify, um, you're looking for a place to go to every day. Are you looking to rent a place or are you looking for the town to donate the, the property? Um, I just wanted to clarify that for members of council before councilor. For sure. Yeah. Um, of course, we are like in our financial planning. Um, there is room for um, paying for the space to rent it. Um, just like we said at Earl Row, we would have to pay the pavilion to be there for camps. Um, there is room for that, but we are just starting. Like this project, 
we're coming up to a, a year now with the March break camps and so to get us on our feet if there's any opportunities for grants that anyone has a connection to that we could tap into that would be wonderful um, if there's any funding available um, that would also be a gift. Um, no, no, that's great. I don't want you to have to go through the okay. whole thing. I just wanted to clarify, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. were you looking to rent or you were looking for, for free space? So, uh, and you did that for me, Councillor Jax, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Ms. Sorensen. Um, I commend you as well on the initiative and the and the success to date. I uh, knowing having an elementary age uh, student, daughter who's a student, um, they get such a reduced amount of time outside in comparison to what we even had as children growing up so I can imagine how wonderful the days are outside just to clarify um I noticed in your program schedules it is 12 weeks and they run Wednesdays and Thursdays so is your target student someone who's homeschooled then currently like how does this fit with a traditional curriculum or school age child it's so great thank you so much for your question um both all of it. So we have a lot of homeschooling students that do, or participants that attend our programs, but we also have public school education students that come once a day, uh, once a week, sometimes twice a week. Mm. Um, and so we've done a lot of research and digging, and myself having children that go to school. One of my sons actually goes to school two days a week, and then he attends four school for the rest of the week. And we homeschool on one, so sorry, there's public school, four school two days, and then homeschooling one day. Um, and so as a parent, uh, you have the right to homeschool your child even part-time. And so what the parent does is they present this to the principal. Um, they write out a letter of intent to homeschool and then usually the, there's no issues and the, um, the school board signs off and then they, they're able to attend. And so that's why we kind of run this way, um, just also to honor the seasons and the flow of how it goes. Mm -hmm. And we have students that return. You know, if the one student goes to public school, they did the fall session, then they come back for winter session and spring session. Right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Supplementary? Okay. Thank you. Um, just your presentation noted a couple of times accessibility, providing accessibility. Can you just speak to that in clarification? Is is the program or curriculum available to anyone, anyone requiring any type of accommodations met to be mm -hmm. met? Thank so you. right now, um, no, because of where the homestead is. I mean, there's no ramp to go into the indoor space where we where we are. Of course, if we had a family approach us and say, here, this is, uh, you know, we have certain needs that need to be met, we would figure out a way to make it happen. Um, the terrain might not be safe for someone or accessible to everyone, um, anyone in our community. We're also on County Road 21. So accessibility is not so much, uh, is also in terms of can these children get transportation because it's kind of out of the way for a lot of people and may, might not work with the commute for parents and so again accessibility in that sense is something that we're looking for that's why in Alliston yeah okay I don't see any other questions from members of oh, Councillor Rappin uh, uh, through you to Ms. Sorensen uh, thank you so much for coming very interesting as a teacher and I've done my outdoor ed and all that as well. And um, hi to Julia over there in the audience. And hello to Natasha as well. I've taught with Natasha, another member of your group. Um, the one thing, uh, if you haven't been paying attention to some of the things we're going through lately, I've been talking about natural playgrounds. And you were looking for a, a direction to go. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'm more than willing to look at grassroots, grassroots initiatives from communities. And if you want to have a look at a natural playground uh, I definitely love working with you and seeing if we can bring something like that into our community so yeah uh, um, sorry just in response council rep uh, we do have a motion that it will be preferred back to Parks and Rec to come back with a report to council on what spaces are available or that the town may be able to work with you so that, thank you that so much for the motion uh, but I want to give everyone a chance to speak Councillor Gabrick Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just wondering, through you, um, how this would possibly affect existing day camps that we already have in New Tecumseh, what those attendance numbers are looking like, and whether that would deplete that, um, and also what liability would then fall back to the town should an injury uh, occur on town-owned property. 
No, thank you, and, and that's a great question. Yes, the, the town does run uh, its own day camps, so uh, the suggestion would be is to refer it back to staff and ask them to come back with a report that could address available spaces and the questions that you just asked, uh, responsibility and liability um, on the town. So. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I just, Go ahead. Sorry. Can I? Can I? Yeah. Sure. No. We're just uh, we're just trying to direct it to. You want to report back. You want to know what can be done. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting it there. So. Okay. Great. I just I uh, sorry, Councillor Gabrick. Councillor Gabrick, you talked about liability um, for the town. I just wanted you to know that as an insured forest and nature school program. Um, we do have our own insurance and liability and when we do run programs on a secondary site it's kind of considered like as a field trip so we're covered as long as we get the certificates of insurance from our insurance company um, with the proper address then we are there are some there is some coverage there I know it might be different I guess with the library. we have a certain level that we would expect um, that uh, renters or, or people that use our facilities uh, w would have to provide. Um, but once again, we can address that too. So um, any other comments or questions? So the Deputy Mayor, can you move the motion that it be resolved that the deputation of Marie Michelle Sorensen, Three Sisters Village be received and that staff uh, report back with, re that staff report back with uh, participle, oh, sorry, uh, with possible opportunities. Is that enough direction? And do you want to second that, Councillor Jackson? Okay, so let's move and second it. All those in favor? That's perfect. That's carried. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to CW3. Sorry, C3, my apologies. Uh, and that is uh, a request from Jennifer Bergenthal, Executive Director Schiff, to refer coldest night of the year, request for fees waived. Um, Deputy Mayor, you pulled it. Did you want to put a motion on the floor? Uh, thank you. Yes, I would. I would like to put a motion on the floor that we waive the fees for Schiff for their cold, coldest night of the year event on uh, at the AMA for February 25th, 2023, and that we also waive the fees that they have already paid for the parking lot in the amount of $162.42. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second or Councillor Masters? Is there any comment or discussions on that motion? Uh, sorry. Um, I could, you want to go? Okay, Councillor Bisk. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, through Worship to staff, not sure who could answer it. How much will the total be that we waive in terms of the fees that uh, we're waiving? I figured that's where the, where the GM was. Sorry, Councillor Riss, that's why I was looking at her to, 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 to answer the question. Sorry. Through your worship to Council, um, the, first, of all, oh, first of all, I'd like to mention that we did look into uh, the opportunity of renting the um, facility, which is not available during that time frame, so, uh, except after 5 o'clock, so I'm not sure that that's even suitable for them. So that might cross that section off of the request. Secondly, the uh, I don't have the email. Oh, um, it, it was one hundred and sixty-four dollars and forty-two cents. But I just like to respect to respectfully point out to council that we generally don't waive fees. But what we have been known to do in the past is offer a grant in lieu of the cost of the fees. We don't like to set a precedent or a protocol of waiving fees by request. But it is council's prerogative to grant funds to um, different facilities should they choose to do that. No, count, thank you for that clarification, GM. Um, I'm sure 5 o'clock, if that's when it's available, I'm, I'm sure they would uh, take that because they don't come back, I think, till maybe 5 o'clock. And the walk starts at 4, so if, if we can offer it from 5 o'clock up, if council's amenable to doing that. You heard from the GM. Did you want to just grant it or do you want to or sorry, waive the fees, or do you want to take it from the grants and donations? Is there any comments, questions? Councillor Foster. Thank you, Mayor Norcross. I would just ask, in, in light of what GM Bedford has said, and I think in the interest of, of, of fairness to all groups who come and ask, if we follow along that line of, of taking it from the grant, it just it precludes us from 
the next time having to issue something. And if you follow a process that's established, then I think it's fair. So I'm not opposed to it. It would just be if it follows that process, I would ask that we make that amendment. I'll look to the deputy mayor to be okay with the friendly amendment. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Seconder? Okay, thank you. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. So we have CW31, Deputy Mayor has declared a conflict and has turned her back to the table. And the motion is be resolved that report number ED-2023-01 be received. Refer that municipal fees and charges required to obtain a permit to operate temporary restaurant patio will continue to be waived. For that fees will be reviewed as part of the annual fees and charges by law review. Moving or seconder, please. Councillor Foster, Councillor Biss, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Deputy Mayor, you are back in. So this is where we're gonna to move to the council closed meeting. Um, I have a pecuniary interest, so once the motion's carried, I am going to uh, vacate the chair and Deputy Mayor McCullen will take over the chair and run the meeting. I'll look to our, our valued members in the audience when we do go into closed session. Uh, we do leave the chamber um, chamber area here they close the door and uh, and that's what they have a closed meeting when they're done if you're still here you're more than welcome to come back in and hear the decision and as we continue on through the night so um, I have a motion to be resolved that council convene in the closed meeting at 6 41 p.m. it's for a verbal report of the clerk unsolicited request to purchase part of an unopened road allowance adjacent to one Maple Avenue East Beaton it's for the municipal act section 2392 C, proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of the land by the municipality or local board. Uh, Moving or second to the deputy mayor, Councillor Harrison McIntyre. All those in favor? Thank you. And I'll excuse myself, deputy mayor, you're, in, you're running the meeting, please.
Thank you. Uh, welcome back. Welcome myself back. So uh, we're reconvening to open meeting. I look to the clerk. Uh, first off, we have a motion that council reconvening to open meeting at 710, following the discussion of item GS1. And Madam Clerk, do you have a verbal report of the clerk? The, sorry, the motion is that it uh, that the verbal report of the clerk be received and further that the confidential direction therein be approved. Thank you. So that's moved by the Deputy Mayor. Is there a seconder? Councillor Foster? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, Council. So we have to do the confirming bylaw. But I'm going to look to the clerk. Did I, uh, did I arbitrarily miss the bylaws? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I appreciate that. Be resolved that the following bylaws be read a first, second, and third time enacted. Bylaw 2023 2023-029, 2023-030, 2023-031, moved by Deputy Mayor, Councillor Gabrick. All those in favor? That's carried. Any general information or announcements? I'm not seeing any. Public notice, there's a Committee of the Whole Planning Public Meeting this Wednesday, February the 15th, 2023, 6 p.m. right here in these council chambers. It's moved in second, we're out. So we have a confirming bylaw. So it'll be resolved that bylaw 2023-032 to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting on February 13, 2023, be read a first, second, and third time and enacted a moving or seconder. Councillor Jax, uh, Councillor Cox, all those in favor, that's carried. Adjournment, be resolved that the meeting adjourn at 7.12 p.m. Moving or seconder, Councillor Cox, Councillor Harrison McIntyre, and we are adjourned. Council. I had the luxury of being outside. Um, should, would you like to take a five minute break before we progress into the next one? I see the head saying yes, so we'll be back in five to seven minutes, please. Thank you.
Welcome back, Council, staff, members of the public. We're going to head into our Community of the Whole, Monday, February 13, 2023, public meeting. So I'm going to go to the clerk. Confirmation of agenda. Thank I'll you, Your Worship. There are no items to add or delete. Thank you. So the recommendation that the agenda for the Community of the Whole meeting held on February 13, 2023, be confirmed or circulated. Move in or seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Bess. Councillor Gabrick, all those in favor? Thank you. Disclosure of pecuniary interest. Council to identify any disclosure of pecuniary interest and the reason thereof. Council, like I always say, if you find yourself in that position, just raise your hand. So I'll look to the clerk to identify any items requiring separate discussion, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, item CW51, Community Improvement Plan uh, Status Update, as we have a presentation by staff. Thank you. I'll look to Council. I'm not seeing any items. Yep, oh, sorry. <laughs> CW52, please. Thank you. I'm going to slowly go around the table. Councillor Masters. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, CW11 is that? And CW12. And uh, CW51 and CW52. Thank you, Councillor Masters. Now I'm going to go to, sorry, Councillor Bess. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, CW32, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to the members of the public. Oh, sorry, Councillor Foster. CW31. No, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Council. Okay, I'm going to move on from council to members of the public. So I'm just looking out to see if any members of the public have anything to identify. I don't see any. So I'm going to go back to the clerk to summarize all items identified for separate discussion, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Item CW11, Traffic Advisory Committee, written motion from Mayor Norcross. Item CW12, Safety Concerns in Victorian Village, written motion from Councillor Gabrak. Item CW31, Business Milestone Policy. Item CW32, County of Simcoe's Welcome Week. Item CW51, Community Improvement Plan Status Update. And CW52, Urban Design Guidelines Review Needs Assessment Report and Project Update. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have a recommendation that all the items not identified for separate discussion be received. And the recommendations there and be recommended to council for adoption. Do we have a move in or seconder, please? The deputy mayor, Councillor Foster, all those in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much. So we're going to move on to item CW1. That was pulled by Councillor Masters, please. Thank you, Worship. Um, to you, I just want to put my name forward for this committee when it becomes about. Uh, thank you. That's duly noted. Is there any other comments or questions? Councillor Gabrick? Thank you, Your Worship. I would also be interested in that committee. Well, that's a perfect mix. Thank you. So we have a recommendation. Um, does anybody want to move and second it, please? It's uh, whereas traffic advisory committees provide a community perspective on road safety issues, and whereas traffic advisory committees promote awareness and education regarding road safety for all methods of transportation, including cyclists, pedestrian, pedestrian and motor vehicle drivers, now, therefore, it be resolved that staff be directed to investigate the implementation of a traffic advisory and or road safety committee in the town of New Tecumseh. Uh, just before I call a vote, um, this has been done up in Essa Township, and I was speaking with the mayor up there, and they said it's very, very effective. It gives them an opportunity to streamline complaints right across the municipalities. It gives them a chance to put in efficient town-wide policies uh, right across the municipality. So, um, Councillor Gabrick, I knew you wanted to move that, and the Deputy Mayor, you wanted to second that. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, Council. Moving on to item two. It was pulled by Councillor Masters, but it is Councillor Gabrick's request. So, Councillor Gabrick, um, do you want to go first or last? Because it's your motion. You have the last. You I'll, have the last word. I'll go last. Thank you. So I'll go to. Sorry, Councillor Masters. It's. Uh, uh, it will be Councillor Gabrick will have the last word. So I'll, I'll go to you, Councillor Masters. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the, uh, what I would like to do is in, um, uh, I have an initiative on, uh, for the budget meeting on uh, traffic calming, uh, including um, 
um, cameras, and I would like to include this initiative uh, under that particular segment, if I can, or at least the uh, intent of it. Okay, yeah, so I, I, I think I understand what you're saying, uh, Councillor Masters, and it's, it's really good points. Um, I think they may come under the Traffic Advisory Committee is, is where I kind of see that. Um, but uh, anyhow, so did you want to speak, Deputy Mayor, then your last councillor? Thank you. I just wanted to say I'd like to see this motion go through as is. Thank you. Thank you. And then I look at Councillor Foster. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Norcross. Uh, through, sorry, Mayor Norcross, okay. my apologies. <laughs> um, in speaking with Councillor Gabrick today, I, I, um, I, I applaud these motions and I think they're always, they're excellent. I would just, there's some policies in here. Uh, currently, for example, um, speed, speed bumps or speed humps um, are not, we have a pilot program and they don't, they don't make up the current policy. And I think um, a lot of these issues are, are definitely uh, in wards one, two, and three, four, and I think you could take it out to the broader context of the entire municipality. So I would look to my uh, esteemed colleague that she might consider a friendly amendment that um, uh, the request that speed bumps be looked at in a, in a larger fashion as compared to just on these particular roads, uh, Holt Avenue, Walker Boulevard, or 8th Avenue, to include the uh, broader municipality. Okay. If she was amenable to that. Thank you. Well, uh, any other councillors? So I'll go to Councillor Councillor Harrison McIntyre. Councillor Gabrick, you have the last. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, we do have a traffic calming um, program policy. Thank you. That's the word. Um, I'd like to just refer this to uh, our staff member here to speak to how this fits in with the policy. Is there staff that would like to answer the question from the councillor? I think I'd look at Director Battery. Thank you, Director. Um, through your worship to Councillor Harrison McIntyre, the town does currently have a traffic calming policy which includes various types of traffic calming, including speed bumps uh, on a temporary basis. Uh, there is a process outlined in that policy of how the public or even the town would go through uh, soliciting input from the residents to ensure that this is something that they want and then depending on what the outcome of there is we would report back to council as part of that and then we would uh, council would make a decision on based on the what needs of the resident and also the data that we've collected to support the installation of those any particular type of traffic coming on the street okay so I So yeah, I, I um, similar to other, you know what the what has been brought forward. I've had many residents approach about all sorts of um, areas and and the need for uh, traffic calming. So what my experience is is that staff does a um, they record the speed that's traveled and uh, and then they come back to us with that information and then that helps to inform the decision that we make rather than having it be something that counselors bring forward and it's done on that on a <clears throat> on that kind of basis I would rather that we follow our policy and um, and investigate it and rather than having just going ahead and, and putting putting things in place without the, all the information so that would be my recommendation to council is that we follow our existing policy yeah and I think that addresses that it uh, the way I read the recommendation is now, therefore, it be resolved that staff be directed to bring a report back to council uh, to address the traffic calming measures as set out below. Um, so I, I think that would be part of the process too, or very site specific, uh, particularly the stop sign and the hidden driveway. But uh, we could certainly get the report back on number three, Councillor Orson McIntyre, like you were suggesting. But I will. Uh, um, that's that's my thought process. But I'd go to Councillor Gabrick. It's your motion, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, that's exactly how the motion reads. Um, so two of them are very specific with the installation of stop signs and the caution hidden driveways as the driveways on Holt literally abut 
King Street. So if a car is coming south on King and turning into Victorian Village, that person coming out of their driveway has no chance. You know, there's going to be a problem. As for the stop sign um, on Holt at Morrison, um, that has become kind of a throughway through there. And there's been a lot of near misses, especially in the mornings. But as it pertains specifically to the speed bumps and the speed humps, taking into consideration Councillor Foster and Council Councillor Harrison McIntyre's suggestions, I wouldn't want to do that without consulting staff following existing policy and also speaking with residents in the community to see where the best placement for that would be. And then to add to that a friendly amendment to the motion to also include Councillor Foster's suggestion of having that um, looked at in other areas where needed. Okay. So I would look to Director Vatry then, that this, or do you have clarification or enough that if this gets passed tonight that you'll just, you'll, you will bring a report back identifying um, implementation on one, two, and three before any decisions were made? Yeah, through your worship, through your worship, yes, uh, we'll collect the data and we'll bring you back a report that identifies the, how these could be implemented. I looked at the councillor, you're, you're okay with that? So I have it moved by Councillor Gabrick and a seconder for this motion, please, that's on the floor. Councillor Masters. Okay, all those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, Council. We're moving on to our, uh, item CW31. That's our business milestone policy. And Councillor Foster, you pulled that, please. Um, thank you, Mayor Norcross. Through you to um, Ms. Breeden, our economic uh, development, further to my, um, my email that I sent today and actually the subsequent amended email. The, um, if, um, my only concern was, and maybe I'm reading it wrong, I, w I would look for uh, other input from other councillors, is I think it's a great policy. It clarifies a lot of things. And as I said in my email, thank you to you for your interactions with the business community and, and what you're doing. I just noticed a number of references to businesses for profit and then very clear direction after that 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 um, town staff can't can't um, be involved in an official capacity. So, uh, and I'll I'll reference a couple uh, procedure four businesses seeking town officials to attend a not-for-profit special event will be contacted by ED office and notified that town officials are not able to attend these for-profit events in any type of official capacity. I, I, I get that and agree with that, but I, I would suggest, for example, in that case, but that as councillors, we should be encouraged to, to attend businesses. So I think what, really what I'm looking for is, is, is equal time be given to what can't be done, uh, what, what should be done, and what's expected us to be done as councillors. Because if I read that policy as a layperson, I would say, so town officials can't come to for-profit events. Hmm. Not so sure. I. It's just. It's just the sound and the perception. If I could, and then in 17, it says the same thing. It refers to, you know, and will not be able to use their position to represent the town in any official capacity. I, I, I have faith that members around this council table will not go and stand outside with a, with a banner on promoting, that the town of New Tecumseh suggests that you buy this particular product from this business, but we also all need to be there to support the businesses. And as a councillor, it, it is an official capacity, but there are certain rules to follow. So I, if I'm not going to make any particular motions tonight, because this this is going to come back in two weeks, so I would I would ask if if I've made myself if, if my thoughts are, are the thoughts of of council, then I would ask that direction be given um, or put a motion that direction be given to amend a couple of sections that relate to official capacity. And, and and our responsibilities as councillor and deputy mayor and mayor. So I'll put that motion out there for consideration. Thank you, councillor Masters. We'll second that. I'm just looking at uh, Miss Breeden. Did you you understand? Like you, you've got the scope that's being requested when it comes back to council for ratification. Through your worship. Through your worship. Uh, yes, I understand the direction that council would like to see us take. Thank you very much. Um, before I call the vote on the motion, are there any comments or questions, please? Councillor Gabrick. 
Thank you. Yes, I'm just concerned that if we passed the uh, business milestone policy um, without further discussion as requested, that we could find ourselves in a situation where we are violating some part of the um, ethics code. And as elected officials who were um, elected by uh, residents in the community and being invited to attend things by residents in the community, that it, it might just sends the wrong message if we have to big brother it, whether we can go or not. No, understand. So, uh, I'll, Counts, Councillor Foster, I, my understanding, just to make sure that I, we're on the same page, is that it's going to be referred back to um, Ms. Breeden. She'll make the revisions to the policy on the suggestions of Councillor Foster. It will come back in two weeks. And then if you're happy, uh, we can we can vote in favor then. But duly noted comments. I appreciate that. Councillor Cox, you want to make a comment? Or a yeah, question? Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Just so I have a clear understanding. Um, is what the information that's coming back just how it relates to our code of conduct? I'm with it, uh, Councillor Foster. Are you comfortable? Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Norcross. Um, just to clarify, is it when reading the policy, it just it, it, it gave the impression in my mind that it was that you you if there's a for profit event, which every business in town is in there for profit, they all do their other events, is that we can't attend in any official capacity. Well, as a counselor, that has official capacity connotations to it, and so I, I just simply thought that the policy in three sections where it was written stopped a little short of saying official capacity is as a spokesperson for the council, but as a counselor, you would probably want to be there and be encouraged to be there, and that by, by reading the policy as it was written, I didn't think it portrayed that message on those three ends. If that, I'm not sure if that answered your question. That's what I was looking to do. Councillor Cox? Yeah, so I think that if um, the policy comes back and it shows how it would align or negate from our code of conduct would probably be uh, a good step in the right direction. And I see uh, Ms. Breeden taking notes there, so we'll go from there. So, sorry, Councillor Cox? And sorry, supplementary. I do see that um, town staff is recognized in the first part of the report too. Does town staff have their own code of conduct? They would have to be following during any respective event? I'd go to the CAO, please. Through you, Mayor Norcross, to uh, Councillor Clox. Yes, the uh, all town employees follow our uh, the employee code of conduct, yes. Go ahead. Sorry, supplementary, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, if we can maybe get that written into the policy too, just I know in point 18, it, it um, refers to town council following their code of conduct. Maybe if the respective code of conduct of town employees be followed at um, such events was added in there, that would, might be good. That's fine, Mr. Seal. Yeah, we'll make sure that's referenced on the report that comes back. Okay, Mrs. Breen. I'm um, sorry, I'm just going to go around the horseshoe. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you were next, then Councillor Masters. Thank you. Um, when I read this, it was point four that stood out for me because the, the way I initially re read it was that we're not allowed to go to for-profit events. We are. <laughs> um, but the way I see this policy rolling out is that we're not going to get an official invite through our economic development. So it, it almost just needs... A little bit of rewording because I'll tell you we are in official capacity wherever we go we are always counselors we're always the mayor we're like in the grocery store in Walmart it doesn't matter um, but what I after I read it and, and, and I talked about it we're not going to get an official email invite through the town's economic development so if maybe it can sort of speak through that because sometimes we get emails you know um, through or emails inviting us places one-on-one -on -one or whatnot and I think it just means that it's not going to be sanctioned through the economic development office so if that if we can just clarify that I think that would make a big difference thank you do you have that clarification thank you Ms. Breen sorry Councillor Masters thank you your worship through you to the staff um, 
what would be the difference between uh, a policy for staff and a policy for council? Um, you know, if we're talking the same thing, you know, um, uh, I think they should pretty well follow the same, wouldn't they? As far as policy of conduct, under those conditions, under those conditions of, of uh, business visitation. Well, I don't see you where, so in other words, I, uh, I would be uh, a bit strange to be reading a policy for a staff and then read another policy for council. I think there should be a blended policy on something like that. I'll go to the CAO to either answer or, or to refer. Thank you, Mayor Norcross, um, and through you to Councillor Masters and members of the committee. I, I don't believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Cox, I don't believe you were speaking to two different policies with respect to attending events, but just referencing the employee code of conduct that if employees were to attend these events, which they don't normally, but if they were, then they would adhere to their own code of conduct as well. So it wouldn't be two separate policies here just referencing both policies yeah and that answers your question Councillor Cox um, yes the only reason I referenced it because in the scope of the agenda item it says the policy applies to the mayor deputy mayor members of council and all town employees that may attend a milestone event in any type of official capacity okay CAO thank you mayor Norcross um, j just to clarify things because as I'm reading the policy um, th there's a difference between for-profit businesses and for-profit special events. So I would ask council just to keep that in mind because your comments with respect to um, businesses, well, of course, businesses are for-profit, um, but that doesn't necessarily, that's not the same as a for-profit special event. They are very different things. Okay, so we'll get that outlined when the when more references come back. Okay, is there any other comments or questions in regards? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so business milestone policy that was called by you, Councillor Foster, would you move that? Please. Thank you, is there a seconder for that? Councillor Cox, okay, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Um, we're going to go on to CW3-2, which is County of Simcoe's Welcome Week, and that was called by Councillor Bess. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, through Worship to, I believe this would go to the CAO, um, or, the, okay. Um, so, um, Ms. Breeden, so I, I'm happy to see that the County of Simcoe's uh, Local Immigration Partnership and Ethnic Mosaic Alliance um, have received an Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada grant that uh, allows them to host a week of welcome for Canadian newcomers into in the county. I noticed in the report, which is very well written, that um, almost 20% of our residents um, were born outside of Canada. And um, certainly that reflected a lot of the things that I saw when I was out uh, campaigning, and I was very happy to see that. And the two organizations are requesting that the town to come to lead a one-day community municipal and social services fair during the week of June 11th to the 17th. And I support that 100%. Um, what I have, to, I, what I want to ask, though, is I believe our policy is that we uh, do not waive uh, fees, and we certainly wouldn't waive, and and we and instead we provide grants. However, I do not believe that the county of Simcoe qualifies for a grant. Um, so I would ask that we remove the second paragraph of this um, motion. So. I, to remove the and further the staff be directed to waive all rental and setup fees to the county of Simcoe associated with holding the community fair at a town run facility um, and I'm hoping that someone would second that that we'll just read the first one um, that report ED 2023-04 be received and further that committee of the whole direct staff to undertake a community fair uh, community fair between the week of July 11th to 17th 2023 in association with the county of Simcoe's week of welcome Thank you. Is there a seconder for that motion, Councillor Jax? Okay, so we have the amended motion. Uh, any other comments or questions, Deputy Mayor? So just to be clear, are we not, we're not giving them a grant and we're not waiving the rental fees? Is that, okay, I, I, I don't support that. Um, I think down here there needs to be a more, more of a presence to um, celebrate and practice inclusion with um, local 
immigrants and the ethnic mosaic alliance and um, I still support that we whether it be in the form of waiving the fees or giving them a grant regardless um, I'd like to support this initiative because I think it's important clarification Councillor Bess Thank you, Worship. So just to clarify, Deputy Mayor, I'm not saying that we don't support it. What I'm saying is that the county does not qualify for a grant, nor do we waive fees. So it's not possible for us to provide any financial assistance, considering though the grant that the Simcoe County is the higher municipality, um, and they also have received money um, from Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. So they've received a grant, um, and we're not in, even in a position to waive fees, nor give another grant to the County of Simcoe. So I support this 100%. I think we should do this and make sure that we um, uh, set aside the right um, uh, the, the right town staff energy and support and accommodate everything that needs to be done here. But I don't think we even have an opportunity or even the ability to provide a grant to the county. Maybe the, maybe I can direct this to the General Manager uh, Bedford. Well, I'll comment. take it. I'll go to the CAO. I think that's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Norcross, through members of council. Um, certainly with, with an understanding um, that we generally don't waive fees, and Councillor Biss is absolutely correct, the county would not qualify for a grant. Our, our thought with requesting this of, of council is that there's only one taxpayer. And that was our thought, that you know whether we pay for it, the town of New Tecumseh or the county of Simcoe, at the end of the day, it's really not making much of a difference when we look at who's paying the rental fee. So that was our thought process through it, but obviously we will um, certainly uh, follow Council's direction with respect to the position Council wishes to take. Councillor Biss? Uh, thank you, Worship. Through, through, through Worship to uh, the CAO. So my question is then, um, what funding source could we use? I absolutely support this. If it's something that we have to do in the town new to come with, what funding source could we use to accommodate and make sure this happens the week of the 11th to the 17th of June? I can probably go to the GM on that. Or Go ahead. Through your, through your worship, uh, there is funding available in the economic development budget under special events that we could pull the money out of there that hasn't been allotted to upcoming events. There is a, a fresh uh, a, a cushion, I would say, hopefully, if the budget is approved, that would allow us for an event like this. Okay. So maybe we come back, you can identify the funding sources because it's got to come back to council. So that'll give you two weeks to identify a funding source. Through your worship, it would be coming out of the, uh, we could use the emergency fund for the mayor's business address. Nice. <laughs> Which was $1,500. I'm just not sure if you're, you're joking me or not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It's nice to see that they were. Yeah, we'll just have that in the report that come back, what the funding is. Councillor Biss, did you have another comment on that? I, did you yes, Worship. So I'll just amend my motion Thank to you. read that report uh, ED-2023-04 be received and further that the Committee of the Whole direct staff to undertake a community fair between the week of June 11th to the 17th, 2023 in association with the County of Simcoe's Week of Welcome and further that staff be directed to identify a funding source, to, funding source to support our efforts to support this great program. I'll give the clerk a minute to, uh, to address that. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions though. So, sorry, did you want to go Deputy Mayor? No, okay, thank you. Uh, and this is through to Ms. Breeden. I, you know, reading the report, I, how many different days are gonna be set up throughout the county? Uh, through, your, through your worship, we believe there will be seven right now. Um, that was my thought process. The county has confirmed that the Sunday will be an event uh, at the administration building, at the county administration building, and then the Saturday will be uh, another event at their main building. And then they're hoping to have a day in the east, west, north, and south. No, no yeah. thank you. And the reason I'm going there is because what they're requesting, and it, it's, it's interesting, is that... Um, everybody holding an the event they want us to develop in our own marketing our own promotions and our own plans to have people um, attend the event and they want us to develop you know invitation and correspondence I just wonder why we couldn't share can we not instead of everybody going and doing their own let's collectively work together all five or six of the participants and you know come up with one one great process 
um, and it's the same across the board so that we could put it out there as a countywide initiative. Uh, I, I think that would have a bigger impact. So would you mind asking if they would share what, what, what they're doing? Uh, yes, Your Worship, happy to share that with the organizing committee. That'd be fantastic, thank you. So I am now gonna go to the clerk. Um, I can read the first part if you wanna do the second. The recommendation that report number ED-2023-04 be received. And for the staff be directed to undertake a community fair between the week of June 11th to 17th, 2023 in association with County Simcoe's Week of Welcome. And for that, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. And, for, and further that staff be, thank you, Your Worship, and further that staff be directed to identify a funding source to support the event and report back to Council at the February 27th Council meeting. Okay, Council, you're in compliance. Uh, Councillor Biss, did you want to move that, that motion? I figured you would. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Gabrick. All those in favor of that motion, and that's carried. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council. Now we're going to move on to our CW. 5 1, and we have a presentation, and it's regard to our CIP. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Jeremy, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so good evening, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and members of Council. I'm going to be providing you with a quick update on the current Community Improvement Plan uh, CIP grant program for the year 2022. Uh, so New Tecumseh, next slide please, sorry. Uh, New Tecumseh has a history of Community Improvement Plans going back to 2005. Uh, the purpose was always a long-term strategy to help revitalize community, the community and promote investment. From 2006 to 2001, 47 businesses have received grants totaling over $589,000, demonstrating this town's commitment to investment in our communities. Many of these enhancements have included signage, facade improvements, and assistance with upgrades to current building code requirements. Next slide, please. So the updated CIP plan, oh, there we go. Uh, the updated CIP plan came into effect January 1st of 2022. Um, it included an expansion of the project area and offered an increased suite of grants. Uh, 2022 had a budget of $125,000 and we saw over the course of the year approximately 20 expressions of interest out of those expressions of interest, three CIP grants were awarded with two still in progress for a total of five, uh, including a rental housing tax increment equivalency grant or a TEAG, which is still in progress. Uh, approximately $7,000 was awarded for three signage grants and another $64,000 awarded for, an, for an other grants. Thank you. Uh, the downtown areas of Alliston, Beaton, and Tottenham have a specific set of grants, uh, which include the facade building and property improvement grants, which is for upgrades to building facades, signs, and lighting. Uh, there's the downtown residential improvement grant, which is for development or improvement of residential units in the downtown. Uh, the commercial at grade conversion grant to add commercial space where there is none or convert commercial space to another commercial use. There's the public art grant for public murals and art installations. Uh, there's the privately owned public space or POPs grant for the support, the revitalization of privately owned public outdoor areas that are perceived to be public spaces. And lastly, while this one doesn't occur in the downtowns, it's the heritage grant and it's assistance with maintenance for properties within the recently approved Beaton Heritage Conservation District. So all of these grants are typically a percentage of the total cost to a maximum cap. And then we move into the tax increment equi equivalency grants programs. Uh, there are three of them. Uh, the Catalytic Development Grant or the TEAG, or it is a TEAG, encourages the development and redevelopment of pre-selected properties where there will be a significant increase in social and economic benefits to the community as a result of the proposal. 
The other two grants help to stimulate the construction of purpose-built rental units and for development or redevelopment of employment area properties. Uh, the image on this slide is actually an artist's rendering of our first rental Teague, uh, applied for and still in progress on Dunham Drive in Alliston for 47 purpose-built rentals. So as part of the implementation process for the current CIP, Section 7 allows for the yearly review of the plan. Staff are requesting a review as some items have been identified that re require a review and update to continue to support redevelopment into our communities. Expansion of the program area and some minor adjustments to eligibility criteria are main issues identified along with a review of the catalytic priority sites. Additional items are anticipated as part of the review through engagement with the public and business community. So as mentioned, the catalytic priority sites, which are marked in yellow on this slide, uh, need to be reviewed and if needed, update. The three communities each have identified sites. Tottenham has sites at the corner of Queen and Mill Streets. Alliston has sites along Victoria Street from Paris Street to Walnut Street. And Beaton are clustered around Main Street, east and west of Patterson Street. The marketing and prom promotion plan has been spearheaded by the Economic Development Department and has included a wide range of marketing tactics, including social and print media. There's also been an increased engagement with stakeholder organizations, chambers of commerce, and BIAs through presentations at BIA-sponsored events, as well as targeted tactics and messaging for each type of grant. So next steps. With the implementation of a review, our next steps will be to engage the public with on the CIP in the spring of 2023 through open houses, online surveys, and outreach to BIAs and Chamber of Commerce, a review of the catalytic sites where staff will prepare a package for council review and input in spring of 2023, and finally, staff propose to have a draft update for summer 2023 for council consideration. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions in regards to the presentation? Councillor Masters? Thank you, Worship. I guess that's where I can... No, actually, knock. oh, we're just the comments or questions, then we'll let Jeremy sit down, okay. and, and then we'll open the floor up to, uh, to Council's discussions. I just don't want you to have to sit there. So if there's any comments or questions of your presentation, Councillor Biss? Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Worship. Um, to, I'm sorry. Jeremy. Jerry, I'm sorry. <laughs> forgive me. I'm, That's okay. Yeah, and I just had a, my brain went sta stalled on me. Um, one of the things that I think that um, a lot of us are very interested in, in terms of urban design is to, to try and, and to encourage businesses to invest in uh, electrical vehicle char charging. I mean, we all we all know that they have a certain range, and EV charging is something that determines whether or not someone can actually visit a certain urban or, or residential area. Is there some is there some plan to to include EV charging EV charging stations uh, in this in this CIP? Jeremy, I think I'll I'll go through. I'll Absolutely. think. Yeah, I'll refer to Director Best, please. Yeah. I always sit in the spot with the uh, mic that doesn't work. Um, no, Director Vatry gets here before you and swaps it. <laughs> uh, so at this time, we're just seeking input on what should be included for it. So EV chargers could go on our list. So we just kind of gathered input over the past year from council input and what um, business owners have submitted to planning and at events have mentioned to us. So we're op the floor is open. Thank you, Councillor Bess. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions of Jeremy, please? Uh, Councillor Foster. Uh, thank you, Mayor Norcross. Uh, thanks for your report, Jeremy. Of, of all the different um, programs within the CIP, was there a, any of them that had no applications during the 2022 year? Like, I know you're looking to expand it, but is there also some things that, in looking back, you've said to yourself, we just had no take up on that, and there doesn't look to be a lot of optimism out there, so that instead of expanding the program, something could be replaced, potentially? 
director um, through, through Mayor uh, Norcross to Councillor Foster. At this time, th there was limited uptake with the coming out of COVID. So we're hoping with the more of the marketing and promotion plan that our economic development officer, Ms. Breeden, has been working on will help stimulate it more interest in grants. And we also had a lot of interest in different grants, but they unfortunately were outside of the program area. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions of Jeremy? No, oh, Jeremy, thank you very much for your very detailed report. Thank you. And you're welcome. Now I'm going to open up the report to members of council. And I believe this, uh, we're at CW 5-1. Uh, Councillor Masters, you had identified you wanted to speak to it during the presentation. Thank you, Worship. Um, first, I, if you allow me, I just want to digre uh, digress a little bit. Um, well, it depends I, how long you're going to digress <laughs> for, to be honest with you. Actually, uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I sat on the Economic Development Committee for this town nearly 15 years ago, and it was actually the CIP program was handled under that committee, which was mainly made up of businesses, citizens, and a town representative. And uh, so we handled the CIP program, which basically was just the facade program. And um, I, it's amazing how much this program has grown over the years, and I'm really happy to see that. But back then we had the same problem that many of the businesses didn't know about the program. And then uh, after we finished all our grants up, people would come and say, well, I didn't know about it, I didn't know about it. So um, that leads me back to the earlier comments, and this is through to uh, Becky Breen of, of, of our EDC department. I noticed that, uh, and it was in the presentation also, uh, and thank you for that presentation, um, Jeremy. It was very good. Thank you. Um, that um, and the part of the marketing side of it, we note that uh, weekly social media posts on town social media channels. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask, what are those media channels? And the second question is, and I should have checked it before I came here, uh, is this program on our own town website? That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Masters. Ms. Breeden? Sure. Okay. Okay, we're on now. <laughs> Through your worship to uh, Councillor Masters, the social media channels that we are using are uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Those are our main channels. And yes, there's a whole page on the town website dedicated to the CIP, and all of the information, the documents, and the application forms are directly on there in a step by step guide of how to apply for the application. That was a good counselor. Good question, Councillor Masters. Thank you for doing that. Any more comments or questions in regards to the report? Councillor Gavrick? Thank you, Your Worship. I am just to speak to what Councillor Biss brought forward about um, electric electric stations for charging. Um, I think it's a fabulous idea, especially with range anxiety being such a thing, um, working in the automotive industry and knowing what's coming for electric vehicles in the future. Um, we know that we need to be prepared and have the infrastructure in place. So as a halfway destination between the Muskokas and the GTA, this is a lovely place to stop, charge up the car, have lunch, buy something, get back in the car, head on up to the cottage. So I just wanted to add that. No, and can I ask you a question? I, that's interesting. Range anxiety, uh, that's out there. I, I just, I, I never thought of it. Yeah, um, through you, your worship, to your worship, it is a real thing, and it's becoming like the, the biggest problem um, since COVID. Like people are, um, you know, buying vehicles. They're looking to the salespeople when they're buying the vehicles to not just look at the stats on the vehicles themselves, but also what the vehicle is truly capable of depending on what you're towing and how far you need to go and then what those layovers and delays look like because of the lack of infrastructure currently available. So I think, you know, that would be a fantastic add to our downtowns. No, thank you for... Uh Thank you for explaining it. You know, right? I, I, I take gas stations for granted. I, um, cause they're everywhere and everything about it. So, uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. 
So we have a recommendation that report number PD2023-09 be received. And further, that the presentation of Jeremy Bonham be received. For the council direct staff to review the community improvement program as a whole, in addition to feedback obtained from council, business owners, and of course, members of the public. Do we have a moving or a seconder for that? Deputy Mayor, Councillor Masters, all those in favor, and that's carried. Thank you. We're going to move on to item CW.5, Urban Design Guidelines Review Needs Assessment Report and Project Update. And I believe that was pulled by Councillor Harrison McIntyre, please. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really excited about this, um, that we're finally getting to this. Um, as everyone saw, it, our, our urban design guidelines haven't been updated since 2002. And so this is long overdue. I mean, the report speaks to um, some of the problems that our current um, urban areas um, have in terms of walkability, in terms of like sizing, spacing. So it's it couldn't come any sooner. Um, my question is, there in the report it says that the building or landscape scape style won't be addressed or won't be spoken to um, but that there'll be a similar set of principles and specific principles for the different building types so what i'm wondering is when we get an application for um for you know like a, a new build like we had in you know an infill housing and uh it's how are we going to, in terms of the style, how are we going to um, deal with that? Because what's happened in the past is, you know, we get an application and it's like in an old neighborhood and it's all siding. Um, and we have to go back and be like, no, no, we're looking for something of a higher quality build. Is that something that is, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's something that's gonna be addressed in here, but how is it going, will it be addressed? Uh, through Mayor Norcross to uh, Councillor Harrison McIntyre. The item won't be addressed to say what materials and things like that. So the principles and the uh, items under compatibility and public realm and character of neighborhood. So it's going to hold those things as, as high standards that they would have to adhere to. So it's not going to be prescriptive of saying brick only, no siding, uh, has to go with a color palette from Benjamin Moore. Like it won't go into those details, but there'll be a set of principles and, and explaining it with examples in the urban design guidelines to help with that. And we are working towards figuring out how to get urban design back into the planning process since it was uh, removed as part of uh, Bill 23 with site plan. So we're also working with the consultant on that as well. So we can still have um, a review of urban design to ensure it meets our needs. Hey. Thank you. I didn't even think about Bill 23 when I was reading this, but thank you for bringing to my attention that some of this stuff won't even... Um, I think this is a bigger conversation that I like to have with you after. Um, so thank you very much for that answer. We will still have the opportunity as council though when an application comes forward to speak to that or again is that something that with Bill 23 those applications have now we won't have an opportunity to speak to the quality of builds. Director. Thank you. And so, Councillor Foster, then Councillor Masters. Thank you, Mayor Norcross. Through you to Director Best. I think we're all familiar with Niagara on the Lake, maybe Huntsville or Gravenhurst, and everything that gets built in those places. I'm not sure of what goes on behind the scenes or the fight that happens at Council, but what do they do in their urban design guidelines that? whether it's a fast food restaurant, whether it's a winery, whether it's anything that goes up, just conforms to that overall look of the, of, of the municipality. Is there, is there, maybe what do they do that other municipalities don't do that give them that ability to, to, to create a look and then enforce that look through site plan applications? Director? Who 
principles. Thank you, Councillor Masters and Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. Um, the um, my question is on. Uh, first of all, this is um, one of the best reports I've read um, on the needs assessment. I've read a few over the years uh, through the town, and, and this one is pretty in depth. Um, in particular, I noted on there it uh, talks about limited walkways, uh, surface parking dominance being an issue and uh, the little or no connectivity and I really like the idea that this report is focusing on on uh, the needs of the people to be able to get around uh, without trying to use their car but that in mind I didn't see um, a lot of information on public transit and I think if we're going to um, and I know that's the kind of the elephant in the room right now because you know the, ta the county has been you know taking care of some of our transit needs right now, but we're, sooner or later, we're going to have to think about our infrastructure and how we, as a town, are going to manage uh, transit within our within our uh, town borders. And um, I wonder, um, you know, you know, if this is something that can be, um, you know, um, really um, included in this particular report. Are right, you comfortable? Thank you. And then always encompassing that we know the transit's coming down. And so that it, it won't be a surprise or a shock to the communities going forward that you will see transit buses. Well, let me finish. Okay, go ahead, Council Masters. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. So uh, does this mean that uh, we will be working on our own in, internal transit program uh, uh, in the future? Is this something that we're going to put together as, as a, an addendum to this report or in addition to this report, like a more solid... Uh, plan focusing on the on the um, on the uh, needs assessment report itself on how we're going to lay out director. You know, Councilor Masters, Deputy Mayor, you are next. Thank you, Worship. Going back to um, Councilor Foster's comment um, about Niagara on the Lake, um, Councilor Harrison McIntyre and I both looked at each other and simultaneously whispered Heritage District because it is a heritage, heritage district and that's something that um, any heritage district I've ever been in is, is beautiful like Niagara on the Lake. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so any other comments or questions in regards to the comments or questions? Go ahead, Councillor Foster. Um, thank you, Mayor Norcross. Is it exclusive to heritage di districts, or does that designation have to be made in order to get that, that particular look, or can it be done without the need of a heritage designation? I guess through to Director Best. And thank you for the comment. I was not aware of that. Thank you. All right. So we have 
The recommendation of the PD2023-10 be received and for the staff continue to work with the project consultants to carry out the necessary public engagement to provide council with an updated set of urban design guidelines for review and approval. Moved by Councillor Rappin, yes. Thank you, seconded by Councillor Cox. All those in favor? It's carried, thank you. We have no public notices. And we have adjournment at the Committee of the Whole meeting of February 13, 2023, adjourn at 8.15. Moved by Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Masters, yes. Thank you, that's carried. Thank you, Council, thank you, staff. Thank you, everybody, well done.